Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our weekly discussion. I don't really have a title or anything for this just yet, but I just simply want to tell you, you know, what's been on my mind, what I've been thinking about, praying about, and hopefully encourage some kind of discussion, whether it's with people that you know or whether it's, you know, maybe you reach out to me and we have a discussion. Um, the, but I also want to make sure that, you know, we're keeping some content flowing that's going to be helpful. So that those are kind of like dual goals. I want to provoke discussion and I want to keep people equipped with things that could potentially be helpful so that they could grow in whatever it is we're talking about or maybe use this or use whatever else to help somebody else. But this week, I had something on my mind, specifically last night and today. I was watching YouTube last night, and typically when I'm just perusing YouTube, I'm just watching random stuff. Well, a suggested video came up about 9-11, and it was kind of like a like recount of all the events of 9-11 by timestamp. And they had the news documents and all that stuff showing what happened throughout the day. And then after watching that video, there were a couple of other videos that I watched afterwards within that stream of thought that was happening. And a few videos in, I get to a CNN documentary, I guess you could call it. It's like a seven to 10 minute video. I don't even exactly remember how long it was, where they discuss uh, Osama bin Laden and his life. Because the question that I had when I was watching all this stuff is how could somebody do what they did? Like, what led up to that? Like, there's no way that he just woke up one morning and said, let's fly planes into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon and, you know, try to go for the Capitol building. Like, I don't I don't believe that he just woke up, like, woke up one day and said he was going to do that. And so I watched this little mini documentary, and turns out that's that's exactly right. Like, he didn't just wake up one morning and do that. What led up to it a few years before that was the Soviet Union had invaded Afghanistan. So they terrorized his people, other Muslim people, killing other Muslim people, driving them out of the nation. And as a response, he felt, philosophically speaking, religiously, however you want to look at this, he thought that the only answer to the world's problem is to convert everyone to radical Islam or kill those who oppose it. And that's what ultimately led to the formation of Al-Qaeda, and down the road we get to 9-11. And so I I really did think about that. I was like, man, it's crazy how little things that I'm sure happened throughout his life, even before the whole invasion of the Soviet Union, that ultimately led him to this madness. And I, I think the same is true for, for other people as well. And I wonder how many interactions we have with people where our interaction is kind of the teetering or the, the seesaw, if you will, like which way are we going to teeter their life based on their interaction with us. And, you know, sometimes it isn't like a big thing. Sometimes it's a small thing. But I personally believe that God mysteriously in in his wonderful, wonderful plan works out his plan and our choices to either live in the light or live in the darkness. And so each interaction that we have with people, I believe, is either we're choosing to partner with God or we're choosing to allow ourselves to think about ourselves only and nobody else. Because if you're partnering with God, you're going to consider the other person's feelings, consider the other person's words that they're saying, and actually provide some kind of good fruit for their life, whether that's giving them a smile, whether that's hugging them when they're upset, whether that's having a conversation with them, whether that's giving them something, whatever that may look like, that's partnering with God and bringing light into their day or into their life. Maybe the goodness that you brought them is something that they would have actually slipped into madness had you not provide that good, the goodness that you had to bring forth. Same thing with the bad, though. How often, I wondered, do negative interactions that we have with people cause their lives to slip even more into madness? 
even the small stuff. Have you ever been at, let's just say you're you're driving on the road and you've already had kind of a bad day and then someone cuts you off in traffic? It wasn't that big of a deal, but that one little thing just set you off. It was like, oh my goodness, like I am so done. You know what I'm talking about? Like you get so angry, so worked up because of one person's negative behavior towards you. But at the same time, have you ever been on the flip side of that where you're having a bad day and somebody actually does something good for you that makes your day and your life so much better in that moment? I think that we have the ability to to make that decision. It isn't something that we have to just be like, well, that happened. There are accidents that happen that cause some things to happen. But whenever we have interactions with people, if the forefront of our mind isn't them first, but ourselves, then we're typically going to side with this hand right here that says, I'm just going to live for myself. I'm going to be a dark influence on their day or on their life and give them a negative interaction when I'm frustrated. And if I'm even if I'm positive, I'm going to be apathetic and it's going to cause them to be apathetic themselves even though they were just happy. Or we can choose the light and say, I'm going to speak life into that person's light and I'm going to pick them up whenever they fall, and I'm going to be there for them. We have these decisions that we make every single day with every person that we talk to, every person that we see, every person that we comment under on their post, every person that we like or, or, or put angry or laughing emojis or something, like little tiny things. You have no idea the impact that what you do has on somebody else until you start to see the fruit of it. Which is why intentionality is such a big deal. And that's that's the idea I want to kind of bring forth is be intentional with the interactions that you have with people. What I mean by that is whenever you see somebody, whenever you talk with somebody, remind yourself that that interaction could possibly cause them to teeter into madness or teeter into goodness. And for me, I don't know if you're like me, but one of my biggest fears is to be that person that is like down the road, they're going to be like, man, I was having a bad day and man, Matt came up to me and said this and it just ruined my day. I don't want to be that that person in someone's story. I want to be the person that when somebody's having a bad day, I can come up to them and just smile and they're like, listen, I don't really know why you're smiling, but my day has gotten better because you're not being a you know a negative person a dark influence in my life. I'm not trying to make this sound super weird and like dark as in like witchcraft. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying dark as in we have light, which is love God and love others. And then we have the darkness, which means I'm going to be self-preserved and I'm going to make sure that my needs and my wants are above the needs of others. That's where there's a problem. And that same thing can can trickle onto your interactions. If all you care about is yourself, then you're going to respond to people as if you only care about yourself. But if you care about others, you're going to actually have concern and and empathy and sympathy for them. It's a big deal. Anyways, I, I didn't want to make this video super long, but I think it's really important that we consider other people's lives when we have these interactions. How much of an influence do you have on them in that moment? Even the smallest of things, maybe they walk in and you're just like pouty. Even that can cause their day to be a little bit more dry. But if they walk in and they see you smile or they walk past you and they, they see you have a pep in your step or they talk to you and you're, you're like laughing and having fun, how much of an impact would that have on their life? Try it. I know from this is I I'm talking to myself right here by the way. I am if I'm having a bad day, I get really pouty. I, I get I'm like <sighs> I do a lot of sighing, I roll my eyes, I say things like passive aggressive comments that come off really jerkish. And uh yeah, it's not good. But I want to encourage us to to choose to live in the light that first John talks about. Live in the light. Don't live in darkness. If you say you love God, you will live in the light. But if you 
live in the darkness and you say you love God, then then you're a liar, according to First John. And so we need to be we we have the light. We carry the light with us, and that because that light is Christ. And we can choose to let that light shine, or we can choose to have to hide it under a, a a bushel, as some of the old folk may say, put it or hide it under a bushel, or you can hide it behind a veil. Whatever analogy you want to use, we tend to hide our own light, and it causes people to to have worse days or worse lives because of their interaction with you. And so, be choose to be a bringer of light. Choose to be that good influence. Choose to be that positivity that they need. Choose to be that Jesus for them because that's what Jesus did. Jesus showed up in broken situations and he didn't call them out for their sin. He didn't call them out for their rebellion. He showed up to them, ate a meal with most of them, prayed for them, laid his hands on them, hugged them, cared for them, and sent them on their way. I believe that that had a more of an impact on their life than when Jesus actually healed them. I think the the healing is was a great thing, but the healing was a secondary byproduct to their interaction with Jesus. And I think the same can be true with us. That if people have good interactions with us, it doesn't matter what they can get from us anymore because now they're satisfied in the interaction that they're having with us. So yeah, that's all I really have to say on the matter. Um, I, I encourage you though, have a discussion with people Think about this. Think critically about it. Read some books that can maybe help you to think more positive. I'm working on doing that myself. And choose the light because the light is really what's going to bring people out of their darkness. When you shine the light in their darkness, everything that was hidden suddenly is brought to light, both good and bad. And things can start to be dealt with and humanity can begin to prosper. So anyways, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.